Very good morning to everybody and thank you for joining us in this cancer symposium. The earlier plenary session by Dr. Laviano, I am sure is uh, very complete and up to date. And I hope uh, to, to complement his talk by talking about the topic that I've given, uh, which is on specific cancer uh, nutrients to counter ca uh, cancer cachexia. I've also included in this talk uh, some of the available products in Malaysia, which might help us choose what is right for our patients. I don't have much to disclaim, except that I have been a frequent speaker for the, these companies, and that some of my slides have been adapted from material from them and also from ISPEN. Now, I would like to start my talk on presenting my last slide for this talk, which really aims to set the objectives and the tone, and then also as a summary of my talk. The first point I'd like to make here is that in cancer patients, nutritional intervention does improve nutritional intake, body weight, and low quality of life, but it does not improve mortality rates. Nutritional treatment should preferably be initiated as soon as possible and not wait for the patient to be severely malnourished. I will also show that energy requirements are the same as healthy subjects, but protein requirements are increased and that there is good recommendations, even though the evidence might not be so strong, but there is good recommendations for immunonutrients, especially for omega-3 fatty acids, fish oils. But we all know that depending on where we see the patient, cancer patients tend to be malnourished. And the reasons for that are many. You can see in this uh, diagram here that cancer patients do have decrease in appetite, either resulting from the cancer itself or from the treatments that have been given, like chemotherapy or radiotherapy. These patients might have physical limitations to actually eat themselves, or they might have some amount of GI obstructions or mouth ulcers, depending obviously on the cancers that they have. This eventually will take us to the next stage of cachexia, which is a state of catabolism due to a very complex uh, pathophysiology, but mainly involves the inf inflammatory process. And eventually the last stage of uh, cancer patients is that many of them have sarcopenia. Now, why we give nutrition in cancer patients is to diminish the metabolic disturbances that they will face, either from the uh, treatment that they are given or from the disease itself, and to optimize the, the, the nutritional status so that these patients can undergo the anti-cancer treatments that might be planned for them and to reduce interruptions of the scheduled anti-cancer treatments. Like for example, if these patients require uh, several courses of chemotherapy and if they are too weak or malnourished, then these uh, cancer therapies may be delayed or even abandoned. So as I said in my summary slide earlier, is that nutritional intervention should be started as soon as possible and not wait till the patient is severely malnourished. Now, before we start any cancer treatment, and I'm sure Dr. Shukri will, uh, will uh, elaborate on this after my talk, is that we have to take into account a few things. Number one is what is the prognosis of the cancer? And through discussion with the patient and the family, we need to know and for them to realize what is the benefit and the quality of life. And also to set expectations for both parties, the patient and the family on what is best for them, especially in the uh, end of life. If you look at the many recommendations out there, dietary counseling should be done by a trained nutrition professional and that it aims to improve the nutritional intake, the body weight, 
and the quality of life. And we have to be very clear that whatever we do does not aim to stop mortality. The reasons why patients lose weight, as I've mentioned earlier in my slides, are many. But this slide kind of summarizes the fact that when you have cancer, there is a pro-inflammatory response and cytokines are produced, resulting in a decrease in appetite, decrease in food intake, and a inflammatory response that results in an increase in your resting energy expenditure. Because cancer is catabolic, it will subsequently lead to a reduce in lean body mass, and therefore the patients will be uh, experiencing significant amount of weight loss. When we talk about energy, a lot of us think that in cancer, the resting energy expenditure may increase. But in effect, if you can see here, yes, cancer cells are catabolic. They require a lot more energy uh, to replicate. They also, once the cancer has spread, for example, to the liver, it may cause a significant uh, enlargement in the liver that can also uh, cause an increase in the REE. But if you look, the muscle mass is reduced. So that will result in a reduce in the REE. And the net total energy expenditure can either be increased, reduced, or it could be the same as a patient who is healthy. The energy recommendation for cancer patients are actually the same as in healthy subjects, which ranges from 25 to 30 kilocalories per kilo per day. However, if you look at protein requirements, if a person needs 0 0.8 to 1 gram per kilo per day, in cancer patients, these protein requirements are increased to 1 gram or even possibly up to 1.5 grams per kilo per day. This is more so in older patients who uh, the process is uh, magnified and these patients tend to get higher amounts of disease-related protein catabolism and sarcopenia. So now let's look at the specific nutrients that, we, that may be beneficial to uh, cancer patients. Now, if you look at the literature, many of the um, current literature on uh, cancer nutrition always talks about omega-3 fatty acids or fish oils. Now, these play a very important role in down-regulating the inflammatory process and decreasing the production of cytokines. And if you look at the slide that I showed earlier about how uh, cancer causes uh, weight loss, fish oils reduce the inflammation and reducing the production of cytokines and reducing the rate of protein breakdown especially in the muscles. So in summary, fish oils reduce inflammation and overall counters the effect of catabolism. Now, so what are the recommendations for fish oils? Well, in patients with, with advanced cancer, it has been suggested that supplementations with uh, omega-3 fatty acids or fish oils does stabilize and improve appetite and uh, food intake, and also to improve lean body mass and weight loss. Uh, although the evidence is low because there's not adequate uh, meta-analysis or randomized controlled trials, but um, the expert consensus is that it has a positive effect on uh, patients and therefore there's a strong consensus among uh, experts that uh, it should be given. So much so that the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics have suggested that medical food supplements contain fish oils does result in a significant weight stabilization or even weight gain and preserves or improve lean body mass. Now, this is also echoed by ISPEN in that fatty acids does improve appetite and body weight and that they suggest that patients with advanced cancer, especially those undergoing chemotherapy, should be supplemented with uh, omega-3 fatty acids. The next thing I'd like to talk about is antioxidants. And this is something that is a recurring theme, especially in nutritional um, products uh, designed for uh, malnutrition in cancer. And they involve a wide variety of vitamins and uh, other elements like taurine and chromium. Uh, 
to understand how antioxidant works, we have to understand the concept of free radicals. Now, free radicals are chemical entities with an unpaired electron. They are basically unstable. And what they do is that they steal electrons from cells. The trouble with stealing electrons from cells is that it causes the cellular membrane of the cell to be damaged and therefore leading to cell death. So antioxidants, for example, vitamin A, C, and E, they play a role in protecting the cellular membrane and preventing the effect of free radicals. The other micronutrients that's worth mentioning is folic acid, vitamin B12, magnesium, and zinc. And I will not go into detail on how these mechanisms work. So how much should we give? Well, the current recommendations is that we should stick to the recommended daily allowance and not to use too much of these micronutrients. What about probiotics? Well, the argument for probiotics is that it does help reduce the incidence of radiation-induced diarrhea. The evidence for using probiotics is not there. This is a meta-analysis done in 2019, looking at several studies, uh, comparing placebo versus a probiotic, found that there is no benefit of using probiotics in trying to reduce the incidence of, radi of radiotherapy-induced diarrhea. Therefore, the current recommendation is that there is insufficient clinical data to recommend probiotics. So now that we have spoken about fish oils, what about, are there any other agents that can be used to counter malnutrition in cancer patients? There are. Um, these themselves are not micro or macronutrients, but there are medications that can be given. For example, uh, corticosteroids have been proven to increase the appetite of patients, especially in the advanced disease stage. But it is very important that they only be restricted for a short period of time because, as you know, steroids has its own set of side effects. Progestins have been uh, described uh, to in also increase the appetite of these patients. And in patients who experience early satiety, evidence has shown and that it is recommended that these patients will be given prokinetics. There's no roles for branch chains or other amino acids to improve the fat-free mass. Also, the use of NSAIDs to improve body weight has not been proven. And also the use of androgenic steroids like testosterone to increase muscle mass is not proven in cancer patients and therefore should not be given. So what is the ideal nutritional product for cancer patients after all the things I've talked about earlier? Now, number one, these patients require an, enough calories. They do not need more calories than usual. However, they do need a higher amount of protein. And I've also shown that the recommendations are there for fish oils to be given. And also antioxidants play a significant role in trying to reduce free radicals and protecting the cell membrane. And there are obviously roles of other micronutrients. So what is available in the Malaysian market? Well, these are products from all the different companies out there, which have fish oils. They have a good amount of calories high amount of proteins, and these are designed and marketed for cancer patients. Now, I won't um, promote uh, either of these. I think um, I will leave it to the individual companies to go in further details about the advantages um, of their own products. But you can see that there are a wide variety of products out there for cancer patients, and some might uh, be milk-based, some might be uh, fruit-based. There are also products out there for cancer patients who are diabetic. And these products generally tend to have lower glycemic index, but they also have higher amounts of protein and the presence of fish oils in their um, ingredient. So what is the take-home message? Now, before I show my last slide again, but just let me summarize. And if you slept through my entire talk, I think this slide kind of summarizes 
what I want to say. The amount of energy needed for cancer patients is pretty much the same as a healthy individual. However, protein requirements are increased to counteract muscle loss and that omega-3 fatty acids should be given and they can range from one to two grams per day. And the aim is, re is, and the aim is to counteract muscle loss and to support the immune function. Now, as for vitamins and other trace elements, antioxidants, now, the amount to be given should be equal to what is recommended daily. And it only aims to regain and to keep good nutritional status. So nutritional intervention does improve nutritional intake, does improve body weight, and does improve quality of life. But it does not have an effect on mortality in cancer patients. And we should start nutritional intervention as early as possible and not wait till the patient is severely malnourished. Energy requirements are the same as healthy subjects. However, protein requirements are increased. And if we can, we should give them uh, solutions or nutrition with fish oils. With that, thank you very much. And I'll be happy to take your questions uh, later in the symposium.